So here we are with yet another drone by DJI, but as you can see, I crashed it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of this video. But that's not how we do it here on Tech360. No, we got our boys in Singapore doing wonders to help us get this review done and asked if we could borrow another unit from DJI Singapore. So major thanks to our regional producers for helping me out on this review. So this time around is trimmed off a little of what some people call pro features and made this standard Mini 3 geared for more of its basic functions. Quite a lot of what they did with the Mavic 3 Pro in comparison to the Mavic 3 Classic for removing that zoom lens to just the main Hasselblad camera. So kind of the same situation here, it's still under the flight compliances of staying under the 250 grams weight limit, but essentially retaining the same size when folded and unfolded. Other aspects like the micro SD card slot is still at the back, but as I mentioned earlier, the sensors at the front are now just these meshes to cover up where they used to be. So maybe it helps with heat dissipation when flying or something. I'm just guessing. While you get forwards, backwards, and downward avoidance sensors on the Mini 3 Pro, this only comes with a landing sensor, so no obstacle avoidance systems, which is quite a bit of a confusing strategy if DJI plan to market this as a starter drone, knowing how it's pretty much very basic features with barely little assistance. But then again, maybe there's just some people out there who are looking for something simple, something lightweight, and under the compliances, that most countries or people experienced enough to fly a drone and just not looking to spend a little extra for those safety and camera features. After all, while some people might want a drone and have it last for years to come, there are some drone enthusiasts out there who burn through these drones like memory cards. Crashing one drone after the other then immediately buying one when a new one comes out. But of course, that's not the majority of people, only the crazy ones. If you happen to be one of them, I can only ask, do you treat everything you own the same way? Then again, I can't say much because... <laughs> I mean, jokes aside, the Mini 3 still comes with a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, but dropped to a 12 megapixel sensor from a 48 megapixel sensor. While as DJI claims, this strongly suggests that the larger area of each pixel, the stronger the light sensing capability. In 4-in-1 mode, where 4 pixels are combined into 1, the pixel size can achieve 2.4 nanometers to perform better in low light environment. Or in other terms, with the same size, more pixels mean more detail. Less pixels in total mean bigger area per pixel and greater performance when shooting at night. It only tops up to 4K30 and you don't get 4K60, internal memory, decent alike picture profile, coding uh, format options of H.265 or H.264 or MOV or MP4. And you also lose out on active track, so you really need to be careful when it comes to flying it around since there's no autonomous features. But where it does stand out is the f1.7 lens, so it does much better performance in low light as DJI suggests. And you also get the option to switch to vertical mode to share those quick to, to social media, to which I still think only the Mini 3 and 3 Pro has among the rest of DJI drones and not to mention the most unique feature which I personally fell in love with in the first Mini 3 Pro, which is this cutout here. Thanks to this, you get to pan up up to 60 degrees or 35 degrees when the drone is moving because of the natural sense of flying, so it compensates the gimbal. Flight-wise, it still does 16 meters per second, same as before, and capable of wind resistance up to 10.7 meters per second. And again, same as before. Now in my previous video of the Mini 3 Pro, I did mention how it does feel as though it struggles a bit more when flying through the air just because of how small it is. But I don't want to take away the fact of how capable and fun it is to actually fly. So it's a quiet drone, so you won't annoy anybody nearby, but it's more of a concern to people who aren't familiar with flying like myself and wouldn't know how to counter steer themselves out of a situation such as 
closing into a wall or tree or moments when a sudden gust of wind just blows it away from its natural course then yeah you'll start to see that some slight disadvantages and you might want to consider something much larger like the air 2s but with a suggested max flight time of 30 minutes you could say that that's far more you could ask for especially if you do get this fly more combo that comes with three extra batteries priced at 868 dollars and i highly suggest getting with this dji rc that gets up to 700 nits of peak brightness and just something that's worth paying that can be connected with all dji drones something about having a dedicated rc is just far better than pairing it to your phone or you could just opt to get the drone itself which starts at only 469 dollars if everything else doesn't interest you there's also an intelligent flight battery plus available which says it could do up to 51 minutes but it does decrease the height limit just a bit we didn't get to test it with the intelligent battery but i'll leave a link in the description if you're keen to see how that performs instead so what have I learned here? Well, to simply put in a paradoxical way, I'll need to fly more, which also entails that I could risk crashing another drone, which then implies that anybody who's planning to start flying will eventually crash too. Well, of course not. Just don't be as inconsiderate and careless as I have been. The Mini 3 is far more capable of handling itself, but like I said, do fly it in open airspace and be sure to stay away from any obstacle around like buildings, power lines or whatever you might get in the way just because of the lack of features that like the Pro version has. Another way of saying things is not the most maneuverable drone so do fly with caution and maybe in my opinion just spend a little more on the Pro version because it just comes with way more. So yes, it's just sad to see a crashed drone. I finally crashed a drone. The last few experiences with DJI drones, I've almost crashed them and here I am finally crashing it. I just want to thank DJI Singapore for letting us to fully finish this review and to our producers in Singapore. So yes, that is my full review of the DJI Mini 3 and hopefully if DJI does consider to send more drones in the future, I will make sure not to fly it near any buildings. So yes, thank you. If you have any other questions, do let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next review.